Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Easy Learn AI. In this video, we'll learn about backpropagation together. Backpropagation is a vital part of neural network algorithms. Today, I will explain the backpropagation algorithm step by step with examples. Let's dive in together. Chapter 1, The Background of the Backpropagation. Before diving into backpropagation, let's discuss its history. From the 1960s to the early 1980s, the focus was mainly on shallow neural networks like single perceptrons. Training deep neural networks was challenging before the invention of backpropagation. In 1986, researchers like David Rummelhart, Jeffrey Hinton, and Ronald Williams introduced the backpropagation algorithm. With backpropagation, deep neural network training became possible. It's now one of the most used training algorithms in deep learning. To understand its importance, let's look at an example. There's a dataset called MNIST. It contains 70,000 handwritten digit images. Each image has 784 data points, 28 times 28. If we make a neural network to recognize these digits, the input layer has 784 neurons, a hidden layer with 100 neurons, and an output layer with 10 neurons. Assuming a simple three-layer neural network, input, 784, hidden, 100, output, 10. We need to calculate connection weights, biases, and the loss for one image. To update one parameter, we need to compute for all parameters. This means 380 trillion operations just to update the gradient once. With a CPU processing speed of 850 million operations per second, based on i7-8750H, it would take 123 hours to change the weights of a three-layer neural network once. Finding the best weights requires hundreds to thousands of iterations. How could we have done anything with neural networks at this rate? Without the backpropagation algorithm, the era of deep learning and AI would not have arrived. Chapter 2, Backpropagation. Now, let's delve into the backpropagation algorithm. Let's assume a simple multi-layer neural network. Two neurons in the input layer. Two neurons in the hidden layer. And one neuron in the output layer. And there are six weights. We'll use the sigmoid function as the activation function, and MSE as the loss function. Initially, all weights are set randomly, and we'll assume a learning rate of 0.1. With these settings in place, we're ready. Neural network training using backpropagation consists of three main steps. Repeating steps 1 to 3 helps us find the best parameters. This process is called training or optimization. Step 1, the feedforward step, is straightforward. If given certain input values, multiply them with the connection weights and sum them to get the hidden layer node values. Then, it's the turn of the hidden layer's activation function. Next, multiply these with the connection weights and sum them to get the output layer neuron values. Finally, use the sigmoid function of the output layer to get the final output value. This completes the feedforward step. The next step is calculating the loss. Since we're using MSE, we just need to apply the formula. As there's only one output neuron, the formula becomes simpler. If we assume an output value of 0.645 and a real value of 1, the error, C, is 0.126. Now, the last step, backpropagation. Let's start by updating the weight W5. We have seen the weight update formula of gradient descent in other videos. For W5, we can change the partial derivative value as follows. To update W5, we need to compute the following derivative. However, since we can't directly calculate del C, del W5, 
we use a trick. This is known as the chain rule. The chain rule is the essence of the backpropagation algorithm. When we want to differentiate a function with respect to two variables but don't know their relationship, we can extend it using the derivatives we know. By addressing parts of the problem, we can potentially solve the whole problem. Eventually, only the relationship we want to understand remains. The mathematical proof of the chain rule might be challenging. But understanding the concept isn't so difficult. Consider this example. Cheetahs are twice as fast as lions, lions are twice as fast as bears, and bears are 1.5 times faster than humans. How much faster is a cheetah than a human? The answer is 6 times faster. This intuitive approach, 2 times 2 times 1.5 is equal to 6 times, is the concept of the chain rule. Using the chain rule, we can divide the relationship between the weight W5 and the loss into parts. This is the essence of the backpropagation algorithm. So, let's compute each part. Let's start with del C, del O1. Our loss function can be represented as follows. Differentiating the formula with respect to O1 gives. With an O1 value of 0 0.645. When we plug in the actual values and compute. Del C, del O1 is minus 0.71. Next, we'll compute del O1, del Z3. Earlier, we used a sigmoid function during forward propagation. The mathematical formula for the sigmoid function is given. For our example, using O and Z, we can express it like this. By changing the variables, we can rewrite it. Let's find the derivative of the sigmoid function for z. I'll skip the complex differentiation process. The derivative is simple and looks like this. Since O1 was 0.645, we can easily find the derivative for z. Now, if we use this derivative in the backpropagation formula, we can find the second term. Next, let's find the third term del z3, del w5. Finding the third term, del z3, del w5, is straightforward. Since z3 was a sum of terms with h1 times w5 and h2 times w6, differentiating z3 with respect to w5 gives h1. From our forward propagation, h1 was 0.615. Using this value, we can compute del C, del W5. Using the gradient descent formula, we update the weights. We can input the gradient like this. The current weight is 0.55. With a learning rate of 0.1, the new weight becomes 0.551. We then update W5 like this. Now, it's W6 turn. The process for W6 is the same due to the chain rule. This value is the same as our previous calculation. Using these values, the third term becomes H2. Thus, del C, del W6 is minus 0.095. Using gradient descent, W6 updates to 0.4595. We've finished updating the weights for the second layer. Let's move to the first layer. The process for W1 is the same due to the chain rule. We can express W1 like this. Because of the chain rule, other values vanish, leaving the same result. This value is the same as our previous calculation. And for the part, del Z3, del H1. Just like what we've seen before. We can reuse the already calculated value of W5. The value of del H1, del Z1 is the derivative of the sigmoid function. We can use the H1 value we already calculated during the forward propagation to compute it. Lastly, we can compute del Z1, del W1 like this. During forward propagation, we computed Z1 in this way. 
If we differentiate it, the final term becomes the input value x1. Using this, we find del c, del w1 to be minus 0.0106. The remaining step is to update the weight. W1 becomes 0.7010. We can similarly compute the other weights, del c, del w2, del c, del w3, and del c, del w4. We can update each of these weights accordingly. Let's check if the neural network error has reduced using the backpropagation algorithm. Let's input the same values again. We add the weights and input them to the hidden layer node. Next is the activation function for the hidden layer. Then, we input to the output neuron after multiplying with the weights. Finally, we get the output using the output layer's sigmoid function. Then, the forward propagation is complete. Considering the last step, the loss function. Then we input 0.645 into the MSE and assume the real value is 1. We get an error C of 0.1245. This error is lower than the previous 0.126. We repeat the forward propagation, loss calculation, and back propagation. We stop training when the error reaches a minimum. That concludes our tutorial on the backpropagation algorithm. The key to backpropagation is the chain rule and partial differentiation. Even if it feels complex with many formulas. Please remember there are three main steps for the training. Weight changes occur through the chain rule. I appreciate your engagement and look forward to exploring further with you in the next session. Until then, farewell. Your interest and love for this channel help a lot in preparing these lectures, so please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button.